this particular subcommittee. There's a lot of uh, work we're going to be doing in the near future. 15 minutes doesn't allow us to do it tonight, but it does allow us to touch upon some topics. With that said, Dr. Malford, would you like to make a comment before? Yeah, sure. Um, so, um, as Wayne said, we do have a lot of work to do with policy in this upcoming year. Uh, we have the two CPR, Comprehensive Program Review items, that we need to address. We also have a lot of um, work to do around revisions related to equity and diversity. In particular, anything that has a gender implication, we need to take another look at that. Some of the things are, uh, are typically not on people's radar, and I think some of those will be surprising as we move forward. I'm not prepared to go into any of that, as Wayne said tonight. But I did bring to you two policy drafts that are important to us for the near future. <clears throat> the first one is the district family engagement policy. This is important for us to have for purposes of Title I specifically, but more generally, it's a good idea to have this in the district. Before uh, Rob departed, you know last year Rob Harrison was helping us out with Title I. Before he departed, he provided me with this draft, and he followed the guidelines by the state to, to, um, to write it. The, um, the policy needs to be adopted by October, but I thought I would bring it tonight as a way of um, being a little bit ahead of the curve. Um, the state requires that we have this again for Title I, and um, I'm just providing it to you tonight um, as an overview. Um, there's nothing here that's very surprising. It talks about the different kinds of parent engagement in the district. Um, involvement is possible through uh, school councils or the wellness committee, other kinds of groups in the, in the district that convene. Um, it talks about the value of parents being engaged with schools and that uh, parents uh, need to have the capacity to help their own children at home and and schools are obligated to uh, support them in that way. So I know it looks like a lot, but generally that's what it, it whittles down to. <clears throat> the next one is an assessment policy. And <clears throat> though, again, it would be helpful to have an assessment policy in the district, this is more specifically geared to the approval of the IB uh, application over in Merrimack. So they're required to have an, an assessment policy. And rather than make it just for Merrimack schools, um, I wrote it more generically to apply for everybody. And then Merrimack can tune it with their procedures to address whatever specifics IB requires of them. So again, in this draft, there's nothing surprising. It talks about we implement the <coughs> state assessments annually. Teachers use assessments to tune their instruction. Uh, we gather uh, various kinds of assessments and engage students as, as possible around those. And um, it would be helpful to have this adopted in September, again, for the IB application. And if we need to, we can come back to it and revisit it. But it, it's a fairly generic document. Uh, you won't find anything that's that's uh, very specific here. It could apply to almost uh, any school, but it would be helpful to uh, Russ and to the Merrimack application to have that in place as they move forward. So then you would want this voted on at the business meeting in September? That would be really helpful if we could have this voted on at the business meeting in September with the understanding that in the future we can revisit this. It just lays the groundwork for us having a policy in the district. Any comments? Uh, yes. I, I don't know that uh, tonight has to be the night, but I've read the policies a couple times, and I have uh, just some questions, uh, some of them concerning updates, some of them concerning um, is this necessary. I think one of the uh, biggest holes that i found um, particularly around phrases like the Kentucky school system will not tolerate. There's absolutely no uh, penalty to back that up. Yeah. It would, it would seem to me that might be a nice foundation for people to know that's where we stand. And if this happens, um, uh, 
these are the consequences. Uh, secondly, there are some things that happen in school systems that go well beyond the privy of the school. We're all mandated reporters, and there are some things that happen at school that actually ought to be sitting in the police department. Uh, so we may need some discernment and some language regarding that. But that's basically the nuts and bolts. That certainly would not be uh, covered in, in a 15-minute yeah, definitely. Session. So what would be helpful, Dick, is if you came to uh, meet with me, we could go through those uh, areas that you had questions about, and then that can help shape our agenda for the year, Okay. you know, as we go forward. Obviously, we can't do everything on one seating, and so uh, it may take a couple meetings before we get through everything, but that would be a really good uh, chance for you and I to talk through where okay. you see the, the gaps. We'll make it happen. Okay. That'd be at great. the same time, know that we can allot time at any time during a uh, subcommittee meeting to say policy is going to be running from seven to eight or whatever. That's that right. So yeah, it's just tonight that it was a little bit hard to fit everything in, so we uh, <laughs> truncated the time a little bit. I understand. Yeah. <coughs> so does it seem okay, Wayne, to? Uh, recommend this assessment policy as a beginning document for approval at the next business meeting. And at our next meeting in um, October, I'd want to go through the same motions with the district family engagement policy, you know, just to make sure we meet the state's timeline. I would think that would give everybody enough time. How much is that, Maria? How many weeks? That we could have this in hand so we could take a look at the draft and the next time well, the, the business um, meeting. The business meeting. Assessment okay. policy would go to the September, I think it's 19th. Yeah. Yep, so two weeks. Two weeks. So that's a business uh, meeting, the Correct. 19th. Okay. That would be great. Could this get sent out in draft form for everybody to look at ahead definitely. of the, when the agenda gets posted? Yeah, definitely. I'm happy to do that. Any more comments? I guess we're done here. Okay, well, I, I appreciate it. I know it's a short amount of time, but I did want to get at least these drafts out and talk a little bit about... Uh, you I know, think what I have a question. Yeah. Um, sitting on the Whittier School Committee, I know it was brought to my attention, so I'm on the policy subcommittee over there as well, that there is like... 99 new policies being brought forth. So I'm wondering, where do we, I know that, you know, this is very new and in its infancy, but where, what, what does that look like for as we move forward? Uh, so what do you mean that there are 99 policies? The Massachusetts has, has proposed, I guess, like 99, something like that. Like there's a huge amount of policy changes coming through. So once they come through, then the MASC and other organizations, my association of the superintendents, would be making recommendations for us. You know, that's, that's typically how they come to my attention. One of our organizations, for instance, your, the school committee organization, would be sending out information to us to say, here are the next policy ad adoptions that have come forward, and to take you know, notice of those. Right. Yeah. Just, I think... With me serving on the policy subcommittee here, that's how I've always seen yeah. it happen. Yeah. So I was kind of surprised to be sitting on the Whittier one, and and knowing that it's coming down the same, yeah, through the same you know the same channels. But there's yeah. like a, a large sum of them. Well, I can reach out and find out if there are some that are ready, you know, okay. for us to take action on. That's for okay. sure. Up, Andy. Well, it's going to give Joanna three more oh, minutes. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were resting. <laughs> Do you know that George, I just looked up there, George Washington University's history department is no longer teaching American history?
know, I'd like to call the communications subcommittee to order. Um, first, or first point of discussion is around the uh, present, present, presentation I showed everyone uh, last year. Um, I've just about finished updating that presentation, um, and I've also been in touch with the Board of Selectmen in West Newberry, and they said, let us know, we'll schedule a meeting anytime you want where, you know, we can present in front of West Newberry, give them an update on the high school project, um, answer any questions. I think a good idea here would be if the representatives from each town did something similar to this. So, Chris, maybe you, Dean, and I could go do this. Um, and, you know, other people could feel free to stop in and just watch or whatever. But I think as a good sort of opening shot into getting people other than the immediate school community involved would be to coordinate something with the selectmen that they can publicize, invite people to, um, so we can just give them the high level overview. And obviously, this would just be the opening round and what's going to be an ongoing <laughs> program of, uh, of um, keeping people, the, community, the entire community educated about the, the building project and, and building support. Andy, do you see any value in uh, making those same presentations with, say, the finance committees in each of the towns? Uh, I could. What are you thinking? I'm thinking that we should make an effort to touch base with as many uh, organizations as we possibly can. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think what we're going to want to look at is where does it make sense to be, and, and certainly... Um, you know, finance committees need to be up to speed on it. I would hope they could show up to something like this if the selectmen were calling the meeting. Um, but I think part of actually what we were talking about, Jeff, is sort of figuring out the uh, the hit list in each town of places we need to be, people we got to go talk to. Um, I think it would also be a good idea to engage um, um, our architects once once they're all. I don't know if they've signed on the dotted line yet, but once that's all wrapped up, because they can provide a lot of interesting insight and past history about what happens in these kinds of projects. And then at any given time, you can use Jonathan Seymour or Greg to see exactly where we are 24 hours before you go, so you know yeah. where the building committee is at at that time. Jonathan would be a great resource to keep everything perfectly updated. Yeah. So that's sort of where that's at. Um, Lisa, does that seem to make sense to you to first so, go out to the selectmen? So are you looking for people from the other towns to kind of coordinate with their selectmen? Yes, I think, I think it'd be good if each um, town's representatives could sort of establish those relationships, do the presentations, because, you know, I mean, people in Groveland don't want to hear me talk. <laughs> hey, hey, um, just a thought. You don't think it'd be better to do all three of them at the same time, bring the architect and the OPM here? Because where they each meet every other week for two weeks, you're basically straggling it out for a month and a half before you get to see them all. And once the first group sees them, the questions and these things start flying, and it tends to, <laughs> it might be better where the building committee is running it, and they are, apparently they are the partners there, to, bring, to have like a meeting and bring the, invite them all in. And get it done in one fell swoop, bring the architect in and bring the OPM in, let them all hear each other's questions and concerns. I'm just afraid if we did like Groban first and they ask questions and all of a sudden people start feeding things out through and the other two towns are waiting a month before they get their crack at it and all sorts of things can start going sideways. Um, I, 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 you know, I, I, I think I think any ideas are good and we have a, uh -huh. you know, we have time to do this. Mm. My, one, my one issue with that is just, I think coordinating the selectmen across the three towns is uh, having done one legislative breakfast with them has, is not a picnic. Yeah. And getting no. them to show up is not a picnic. No, and, and, and you're right. And you, and you couldn't do it so, on, you could, you'd have to do it on an off night when one of the nights they're not meeting. Because they do all meet the same night every other. But I, I agree. It would be, be good to have an extravaganza with, you know, the building yeah. committee, the the designers and everything. Um, this initial thing, I was just thinking the school committee could go out there, we can do it quickly, um, just get people up to speed on, on where we are in the project. 
Um, I'd be a little concerned at this point bringing in like the the professionals we've hired because they're going to get a lot of questions they can't answer. Um, Specific. True. You know, what are you where are you going to put the school? Even you know. Well, I yeah. think I think Andy's I idea is more informal, just reaching out to the communities. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's that's fine. No, no. I'm just, I'm but then just, I also wondered: should this be something that? Even though it's not going to be voted on at town meeting, should we be handing something out at town meeting? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Like we, even talking, but I don't know. I don't. I don't know how far in advance you want to do that either. That that's a great idea because yeah, if we could do like a little one pager, even just yeah. to get high school people, building project. Where are we? Just a bunch right. of bullet points, stuff like that. That's like a great idea because you get a lot. You get a lot of people at town meetings. That, town meeting are the people who vote. That's right. That's why they're there. <laughs> that's a great idea. Oh, if you're talking about just not bringing the architect and OPM out three different times, to no. thought, oh, okay. Yeah, no, 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 no. This is informal. It's, it's his, um, it's the, the slideshow, that the PowerPoint Exactly. It's yeah. the local school committee reps yeah. just going to their town saying, hey, here's where it's at. If anybody's interested, come. And, and yeah. it's almost, um, at this stage, I think it's almost good to have people who can defensively say, you know what, that's, that's above my pay grade, or, or we don't have an answer to that yet. This yeah. project is early on. Um, because we will get questions of, you know, tremendous detail about the mm -hmm. building and they're gonna you know oh yeah we just don't have those answers yet so that and I certainly don't want to waste the time of um, you know other people agreed if, if we don't even want <laughs> to be getting into those discussions but I see it as the seed planting that's right and to get people thinking about it um, to show but you know we got a lot of momentum going and just to get people up that's to speed on where things are at because a, lot, a lot's been accomplished when you look at the timeline uh -huh. it's uh, <laughs> It's, that train's rolling. <laughs> I also think that having those informal conversations in that venue will give us some more information about where the detractors might be at right. and the questions that get posed. If we do it separately, we may hear different things. And if we start to hear a theme, that might be something that we know we need to address versus just people who are feeding off of other concerns. Yeah. But I love the idea of something like bigger all together once we're Yeah, I think in. I think when we're ready and to get into more specifics, that'd be a great idea. Um, but the again, architects have some visuals as well. When when they were working on the North Reading thing, when we were at the point where the town was really coming together, I mean the the uh, drawings were magnificent. Right. They can do all those great renderings and yes. it really brings it to and life. And it was really impressive. And it, it was. It was almost like bringing these blank sheets of paper. We go, oh yeah, that's what it could look like. Right. Mm. And uh, I'm just not there yet. Yeah, the before and after is really a, the aha moment when you think about what this place, the place looks like. And even if you look at another school, it's like, whoa. <laughs> so at any rate, though, this is our, our first step at the as the uh, new school year starts, I think. So is it your, so I get I get the vision now. So what you're thinking is see if you can all get on the selectmen's meeting the same night and each individual's groups of school committee go to their town? That's right. So um, Do you want to say like see if you can get on their meeting for the first meeting they have in October or whatever it is or something like that and see if you can schedule it because they're usually a couple okay. weeks out with their agenda? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think because the presentation is almost cooked, so I think sooner rather than later would be a good idea. Well, they're all meeting tonight, I believe. So the next one would be, I mean, two weeks from yesterday, yesterday would be the next one. Mm -hmm. So if you guys, if that's agreeable, maybe you can all contact your the right person in the town and see if they can get you on that agenda. My mother. So the 18th as opposed to the October meetings, you think? Yeah, it'd be the night before our next business meeting. We should be there yeah. next selectman meeting, I believe. Because I think they're all on the two-week cycle. I think they're all meeting tonight. Because yesterday was a holiday, so. Mm -hmm. Hopefully I'm right. I can't keep track of them all. <laughs> yep, you're right. Am I? Okay. Mm -hmm. You'll all be out two nights that week. volunteers or names or for, <laughs> for each town. Someone to coordinate with the town. Is that something that the three of us from Groveland would want to participate on the same night? Well, yeah, you'd go yes, to ideally. and Because um, I'm very much in favor of that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think the ideal scenario would be... Um, I'm not speaking for you. 
would, would be each group of three sort of coordinates, you know, a night where the, and all three of you would be at the meeting. Um, you know, so you have the United Front, we're showing all the local representatives. And that bearing, and Jeff just raised a good point. We, we probably should um, determine who's going to actually reach out to the selectmen so we can just make sure this is going to be done. So I've already been talking to the ones in West Newberry, so I can do that. Dean and I are set. <laughs> We're good. Um, I can reach out to the Grove ones. So Denise, right. an email for us. Joanna, can you do uh, Merrimack? Excellent. So we're all going to shoot for um, Monday, September 18th. How long was the presentation? Um, should be able to get through it in 10, 15 minutes. It's well, just a, for them to tell how much time they might yeah. need to go through that. Yeah, and, and ideally um, the selectmen, as they're promoting their meetings, will promote this as part of the deal so people show up. So 15 of presentation and then expect another 15 with questions? Yeah, it'd probably Sorry. be about half an hour, I would think. I think it's 30 minutes. So we're supposed to tell them we'd like to open and do a PowerPoint presentation? That's what we're... Just give a background to get everyone, to anyone who's interested, up to speed on the school building project. Yeah, we'll, we, I, I'm just updating the PowerPoint. Um, if, if you want to do something else, I'm not saying it, people even no. have to use it. I think we should do something cohesive. Like at least all use some of those same. So we can all points. we can all play off the PowerPoint, um, and I've almost got it uh, cooked, so we can just send that around. Um, I just needed to update it. With there have been some significant developments since <clears throat> I last showed it to you guys. So everybody would one group, someone would have to bring a laptop and a yeah, we'll projector. Need a, a projector and a laptop. Or you can print out hard copies, I guess, and hand them out to the selectmen. Yeah, if, if the projector is too. I'm trying to for some reason, it's, it's awkward. Or I don't something. know what, what towns. Some towns have them. Yeah. Some towns don't have them. I don't really know. Yeah, I don't know what Merrimack has. So, will the people who are reaching out just communicate with the other folks so that we know if we're on for that night? Right. Please. Yeah. Anybody feel comfortable doing a PowerPoint presentation? Just get a laptop, you can. Yeah, I'm good with that. We'll be able to see a tech presentation. I'll give you a There's a selection problem. Um, yeah, I just don't, you know, email and open meeting law stuff. I just, would it make well, more sense to go through you guys and. I mean, have the presentation sent Mary, out from central and, office? I mean, I. I'm, <laughs> Andy I'm still to, confused about <laughs> when we're over. You know, the simple thing would be here's the presentation, everyone, but you know, can't be. Well, if you put it on the website, then it's available for the public. Yeah. Not on the PRSD website. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you can just it's already, that. Yeah, it's already up in the yeah. public forum anyway. Okay. That'll work. All right. Good. Um, moving right along. <laughs> Jeff, did you want to talk about thought exchange? Um, sure. So you still have uh, some more sessions of thought exchange, and I was wondering if you wanted to move forward with another uh, community conversation. And uh, if you do, I'd be happy to reach out to thought exchange and ask them for their ideas about next steps. Uh, they were really good about analyzing the last pieces of information that came our way, and they may have you know, some ideas about what to do as a follow-up, uh, and I didn't know what your thoughts were about that. Well, I, I think we got um, some strong sentiment towards a combined school with the last one, and I think another one could be good at sort of just cementing that, um, because it would that would be valuable to be able to give our designer specific instructions. You know, as you've said, it makes no sense to do two designs and run up costs if we know one's the right way to go. So I think that can make some sense. Is that the main question right now? Or are there other? Well, I think it would make sense to follow up on the last one okay. and to, uh, to bring it more to conclusion okay. than it wasn't in the last. I mean, um, as Andy said, it brought us from having a discussion about what's the right configuration 
to people talking about what's the best solution for moving the district forward and having a future of success. So their conversation went from one to another. And I think to be able to crystallize that and to have some evidence for a decision in the future wouldn't be a bad idea. My only concern would be is if the questions were too similar or the subjects were too similar to before, people would be like, well, I already did this. I already answered this. So why should I do any of these? Like, and turn off. So I'm sure Thought Exchange has a way to figure out what would be valid areas to move forward with so that we're not just rehashing what we've already done. Yeah, I'm not suggesting we rehash anything, but to move the, the conversation forward. So what would be the next thing? That's what I'm, yeah, what is the next yeah. thing, though? Would it be, you know, what do you look, what would you like to see in the new high school, or, you know? I think that's what Thought Exchange would have some good ideas about what are the next steps for us. Uh, I don't know that I can speculate about that. I'm not an expert as they are. Yeah, I mean, but for a, for example, I don't, I don't know if this is even where we'd like to go, but, you know, the cost of a combined school is going to be more than a high school, but given what's happening in the town, the long-term cost will be less than, but, you know, getting people's input on, um, you know, even just the financial side could be very useful and getting them thinking about it. But it's hard if we don't have hard numbers. You know, like, how much of my tax is going to go up? I don't know. We won't see any hard numbers yet or to, 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 to give my opinion on. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that, that's where I'd be coming from as a taxpayer. Yeah, my suggestion is that if I ask Thought Exchange for some ideas, I could bring them back to you, and then you could say, well, that one seems yeah. to appeal to us, that one doesn't so much, and then you could decide you know, what questions you'd like to include. I found our uh, department chairs are a wonderful resource in terms of student need, department needs, um, just the way you construct a, a classroom for that particular subject area. Mm -hmm. um, they're a huge uh, source. Mm -hmm. what, what were their... Um, participation with the last version of Thought Exchange. And do we have any ideas on how to increase that? Because I have a feeling that we didn't probably get a lot of community members on the last round. And I don't know if yeah, that's true. So I just have a sense. I know that that's the hardest group to get, the non-parents. Mm -hmm. So this would give us another opportunity to build that uh, number yeah. of people who are participating. I think that's another one of the agenda items is one is to get more content out there and to get some feedback about it. Another is to just build the number of people who are contributing and participating. Well, and last time we had talked about, but didn't happen because of the timeline of when, when it was coming out, like doing something, inviting people to the library or, you know, something like that where people who were not comfortable or didn't have that technology could have some support around that. I don't know if we would want to do something like that with a little bit more lead time the next time around in order to engage other sections of the community that might not be. The, um, this isn't really an answer, but I, the, the school systems I spoke to, I asked them that specific question, how, how many non-school community members did you get? And I remember there was one pretty large system in Wisconsin. I think they said like 2% of our responses were from none. Okay. And so, you know, we were higher than that, but I, I agree. And it's always, you know, every one of them said it's a challenge getting, you know, just yeah. school people are much more likely to, to participate. Bring computers to town meeting. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think, so what would you like? So, uh, <laughs> I think it would be a good idea to pursue a second round of questions with Thought Exchange. And if you could bring them to us, we can look at them, see what makes sense, and with the goal of obviously not being repetitive but moving the ball forward. Great. Excellent. And so with that, we will adjourn the um, communication subcommittee. For our work. And each year, the strategic initiatives have shifted and changed. It's a way of marking time, of benchmarking that we're actually doing something. So uh, while it may not be in the traditional sense smart goals, 
they do provide a benchmarking mechanism to say, we did that, we did this, or we did that to this degree, and we're able to show progress. This year, um, I have uh, talked with principals, gotten feedback at our first faculty meeting on Monday, last Monday, from faculty members. And what you have in front of you is really, in my estimation, a pretty good uh, stab at having a comprehensive uh, list of strategic initiatives. Initially, I had 10 listed. It's gone up to 11. And what you'll see down there at the bottom is number 10 has been um, uh, wedged in there. It used to be 9 and 10, and there's a new number 10 that's wedged in. And it's around student and staff attendance. And what, if you look carefully at the data for the innovation school evaluation, what you ha would see is that there are some attendance issues that are happening across the district with our students. And that many of our students are not coming to school as regularly as we'd like. So even though the average attendance if you point to the average, it looks very healthy. 95% sounds like a really good uh, average attendance. Yeah. When you look deeper into that, you see that there are some students who are not coming regularly, quite a, quite a number. We want to get to the root of that. So there are th three components to a really healthy system, and that is a powerful curriculum, knowledgeable teachers, and engaged students. You can't be engaged if you're not here. And on the other side of that coin, you can't be engaged if your teacher's not here. So even though we only looked at student attendance, now it, it begs the question, well, what about staff attendance? So I'm going to take a deeper look at that, too. It's not that I think we have a staff attendance problem, but there may be some isolated issues, just like when we looked at the, the student attendance, that need to be addressed. Because if you're missing either the student or the teacher, you can't have a, a very thoroughly engaged classroom. So that has been added to it. Um, so here you have, as you go from left to right, from our generic world class description to a description of the students, educators, and community, our theory of action. The theory of action is really the if-then, the if you do this, you'll get that component that glues together the vision with the objectives, the strategic objectives. And then at the far right, you have our initiatives. So I think we do have a, a fairly comprehensive and well-constructed uh, district accountability plan. And what you'll see, I'm just going to go on to the superintendent evaluation part, if that's right. What you'll see next is I've constructed in the way of SMART goals, some of the very initiatives that you see in front of you. And this is what's been running in the background of the evaluation and the district improvement plan each year. So I know that there was an interest in seeing them more explicitly written, so I took quite a bit of time to construct a couple of these so that you can get the idea of what we do in the background. When I was first hired, there was very little patience for this level of detail. I had members of the school committee who expressed to me that I'd best not keep bringing all that detail to them. So I didn't. <laughs> but I kept doing it in the background. It, it didn't go away. It's best practice. So I'm happy to reconstruct and retool and, and do whatever you think is best. but you'll see that this is the sort of work that is done so that we can make sure we have a measured, measured approach. The last document that I have for you um, is a project plan for our district capacity building plan. And it marks out monthly or seasonally, depending upon the relevance, those steps that I believe we will be taking to accomplish the intended outcome. It also projects out what goals might look like across year two and year three. Now, what's not here is the financial component. Greg and I have yet to sit down to figure out what will all this cost. So when we think about our curriculum revision process, you know that each 
of our areas has been revised, we now have a, a written document. In phase two, we're actually going to be selecting programs to uh, provide for instructional resources. That costs money. So I'm about to sit down with Greg to go through all that so that when we have our budget come forward, you'll be able to see those costs and we'll be able to project out. It, it seems that, at least to me, we're not going to be able to afford everything all in one year. So you're going to have to have a phased approach with maybe language arts in the upcoming year and maybe math and then social studies and science to follow, you know, something like that. So um, I realized that not since my first year have I done a project plan for you, but this is how we, this is how we do business in my office. And I thought it might be helpful for you to have that since we were going into a session that talked about it. Um, Thank you. So in any case, you know, I, I think um, it might provide you some reassurance that we use this approach, uh, even though I'm not as explicit about it as maybe I could be. Mm -hmm. And if you as a committee would rather this sort of work to come forward, I'm happy to do that. But after my first uh, attempt in doing that, I got direct feedback about that's all well and good, but you know, it's your work, not ours, and could you keep that to yourself? So, um, in any case, I thought this might be a helpful way of showing where we were, where we've come, how I operate, how I gather feedback to put together our improvement plan, and um, you probably already know that these initiatives are translated at the school level for the school improvement plans, and they go right into the classroom. So there are some here that wouldn't do that. For instance, number seven, translate the instructional programming into a conceptual design for the new school. Schools aren't going to be dealing with that. But if you look at implement the instructional rounds, coaching and feedback regarding strategies for addressing the needs of all learners, I do instructional rounds, the uh, principals do instructional rounds, and teachers uh, coach each other or give feedback to each other using the same instrument that we do. So that goes right into the classroom. So, you know, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have, but I, I just wanted to give you some reassurance that, you know, we're operating in, a, I think, a fairly healthy way. And, um, you know, I, I'm happy to, uh, to do whatever the committee feels is necessary. I, I love seeing it all laid out in timelines and measurable you know, goals and objectives. And, um, it makes sense. It makes sense yeah. to me. You know, I can look at this and see August, and I can I think it's safe to assume that what happened in August is you're probably on to September by now. Yeah, and, and the other good part about a map like this is let's say that there's something that we don't get to, then we can talk about why. So why didn't you get to that? Well, and there, there could be reasons, and so things get delayed. So I can remember a couple of years ago, I think it was around fees. We just could not make some fees work until the very end. Greg and I were just like putting our heads together all the time to do it, and we couldn't get it. To, we couldn't crack the nut until the very end. And if we hadn't, we would be able to explain why. So that's another reason for the math as an as an important part is that when things don't happen, it's not a gotcha, but it's a chance to have a discussion about why and now. How do we keep that on the agenda if we want to, and how does that fit in, even though we weren't able to get to it, you know, in, in what was it, uh, thought to be a good timeline? What could have been entered in, I'm thinking, about six years ago, the uh, state did not mandate the superintendent's evaluation the way it presently was, but we followed through and did it anyways and sent it in. That very first year, you came out with aligning the goals to the strategic plan, and you did them with the rubrics of the state. So all the school committee had in front of them in approximately January of the year, and for the next four years, uh, an evaluation of where we're coming from, strategic goals, all using the rubric that the state had given us. Mm -hmm. Now you could have given us that halfway point I into this packet, and I wanted the school committee to use this as a guideline to say what needs to be improved, 
What have we attacked, at least not perception, if nothing less, on what we have uh, done to move forward on any particular goal? So a lot of uh, people did indeed use that as a guideline. They did. Uh, it was so close that I actually had two school committee members pass your evaluation in of yourself to me as though it was theirs until I kind of straightened it out. Those yeah. documents as well always paralleled that five-year strategic plan. Yeah, and what you'll notice too is in the, uh, the illustrations I gave you for my professional practice goal or, you know, any of the ones that I did here, I highlighted the standard and the, and the, um, the subgroup that it would pertain to and uh, the indicator that it would pertain to. And um, I haven't done that with the others in the past because I opened it up to pretty much everything. I wanted your feedback about everything. So I, again, I'm happy to limit to a particular area if that's what you think you'd like. Um, it's been a help to me to get feedback on all of the areas, you know, in the past. Uh, so in any case, um, this is what I thought might be helpful as we go into our next session. This is great. Good. Thank you. Anybody have anything else for the Human Resources Subcommittee? Fantastic. We are adjourned at 6.17. Call the uh, business meeting to order at 6.17 p.m. Start with our roll call. Wayne Adams. Here. Joanna Blanchard. Here. Bill Buell. Here. Emily Dwyer. Here. Dick Hodges. Here. Andy Murphy. Here. Lisa O'Connor. Here. Chris Reddy. Here. And Dina Trotter. Here. <laughs> We're perfect. <laughs> All right, Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, can I have a motion to approve this agenda? So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? All against? We're good. Yep. Okay, first order of new business, MSBA reimbursement. B. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lebrecht. We are at the point now where we have selected the architect and now enter into contract negotiations with them. As you recall, we've already done the owner's project manager. As you also recall, we put $700,000 aside for both of them. We also recall they said we might not have enough money, and they said they may have to come back to you to talk about moving some more money out of stabilization. Apparently, after talking with the architect and the OPM, because when we first started out with $700,000, we were looking to evaluate a high school. Well, now it's become a middle school, a high school, a combined school, so they have to do some additional work. Um, so we've talked about it, um, negotiated with them. Um, the owner's project manager has agreed to do a reduction assessment of $50,000 to help us out. And the, owners, the architect has agreed to work with, with his fees and his sub consultants fees and things like that to get it down to about a million fifty. Um, of course, we had seven hundred thousand. Now the MSBA is going to reimburse us fifty-two percent. So we're, we originally talked about any reimbursement would go back to the stabilization account. What I'm asking now is so we can sign the contract with the architect is to take the MSB reimbursement and place it back into the project. So the seven hundred thousand plus. The 350 brings us to the million fifty that should be able to cover the architect and the owner's project manager through the schematic design phase, feasibility study and schematic design. But since we already had the understanding, I wanted to come back to you and see how you felt about this. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. So the money from the MSBA only comes back to us if we actually start Spend a project. Uh, actually, no. They, okay. th this, this part of it comes back to us because they've approved us through this part of the process. Okay. 
Okay, so the 350 is a definite. That's what I didn't know if like we don't get into a project. As long as the costs are approved by them, yeah. Oh, but okay. 52%, okay. so it'd be a little bit more than 50. Mm -hmm. But And we should have about a $20,000 cushion should anything go wrong within that time frame with the reduction of 50,000 from one because he was only 330 and these guys are 650. So it leaves, leaves another 20,000 in cushion should a sub consultant come in or the MSBA say, I want you to do more geotech or for some reason a traffic study over and above what we would normally do even though we really don't need one for that type of stuff. So we should, this should cover us or at least get us so close that it becomes a non-issue. And the OPM and architect agreed with this process that we're doing? Um, is it similar to what other towns or just um, Some people just appropriate the money and put it back in stabilization. Again, we're, okay. they were saying 700000 was enough, but again, we've gone beyond that scope now. Right. And we yep. talked about combining things, and they have to actually do a scenario because they're going to be showing it to the MSBA that we did do that analysis, and that's why we think it should be a middle high school because mm -hmm. we've looked at just doing a middle school, just well, doing a high school, do it, doing so. a renovation. <laughs> doing a, They, they right. want to see that work yeah. done, so that's a lot of additional work on behalf of the architect. Okay. So, again, the request is to not put the money back into stabilization, as we originally talked about, but to allow it to go back into the project. And that's your call. So when you say go back into the project, do you mean go back into for into building the, costs down the road? No, it would go back into the feasibility schematic design phase. We thought 700000 okay. would be enough. It yeah. looks like it's going to be more like a little over a million, yeah. a million fifty-ish. So if we take the seven hundred thousand plus the three hundred and fifty thousand reimbursement, oh, that, that we're going to get reimbursed. Right. It's, we talked about it we may have to come back to you for some more right. additional funds. Well, instead of taking, we're about to bring our stabilization account to four hundred thousand. Okay. Instead of saying let's take three fifty out of that and then put it back, and I'm just saying let the reimbursement come back in to the project. Okay. We're still spending our seven hundred thousand, but yep. the effect of we now can contract up to a million fifty because we have reasonable, we have more than reasonable assurance that we will have those funds to be able to sign these contracts now. So I'll make the motion. You have to read it. Okay. Second. Can I have a motion to place into the MSBA project fund account those funds reimbursed to the district for approved costs of the school building project? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? All opposed? It's unanimous. Okay, our next session is going to executive session to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions for contract negotiations with non-union personnel. May I have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Take a roll call vote. Wayne Adams? Yes. Dick? Yes. Joanna? Yep. Bill? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Oh, Andy? Yes. Christine? Yes. Christine. Dina? Yes. Emily? Yes. And we will be returning. And we will be returning. Thank you. Um, do these presentations a few times, actually, and I thought they would just <laughs> be helpful. Um, I know this was great that Dr. Mulqueen gave us, and I wish I had seen this yeah. beforehand, but um, here's Dorothy. Well, thank you for having me.
And we're not just talking about test scores when we say that. We're talking about what do you want your students to achieve in Pentucket as they leave you. So how can you do a better job of helping your students do a better a better job of being able to achieve? Keeping up with what's current in the world of education, making sure they have the uh, facilities they need, class sizes they need, and all those other things. Um, so given that, um, we start talking about having overarching goals or a district improvement plan or the, uh, the strategic objectives that you were talking about earlier. And those, uh, everything that happens should align to those goals, just as you heard earlier. The school committee has its own goals, they should align and support that. Superintendent goals should align and support that. They're all the way down into the classroom to be able to see the alignment of the goals um, that bring you to being able to realize your strategic objectives. So given that is the big framework, I think you all know that uh, several years ago, the uh, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education developed a new model for superintendent evaluation or educator evaluation in Massachusetts that um, covers all licensed educators, including superintendents. Um, the objective of the new system, or the new system has some elements that are required, um, which we'll talk about. Um, and um, everyone at this point should have implemented the new system. So there were some objectives of the new system, um, making it a bit different than the systems that were in place before. Part of it was to improve educative practice. So instead of being sort of the dog and pony show once a year, once a, every other year, look into a classroom, let's look at how you do a lesson, it was really to improve to be a tool to help educators continually improve their own practice. Um, the, part of the objective was also to make it more effective, to link it to student outcomes, um, and to tie the evaluation to uh, student growth. So what we need to know about the superintendent evaluation, it sounds like you're all somewhat familiar with it, um, is that there are, there are annual evaluations are required there are some exceptions to that if the superintendent has a proficient rating and has been in practice long enough and we can do it on a more extended basis. There's a standard format to use, but there are some ways that you can adapt the tool to your own um, district and your own circumstances. It does require, if, when it's done well, greater attention to evaluation than any tool that is used in the past. So there's three key components to the evaluation system. The first is the five, a five-step cycle, the second is a two-part tool, and the third is a multi-part rating system. I'm going to go through each of those components. Uh, the first is the five-step cycle. It starts and ends with a self-assessment. So we'll look back at the previous year, where are we? What have we done in the past year? Where are we headed? Um, where do we see growth? Where do we see the need for growth? Um, with that analysis, um, there's also goal setting and plan development and for the year ahead. Implement the plan once it's made. Halfway through the cycle, <coughs> excuse me, there's a formative assessment. This is just a guideline or agenda. It's not a written evaluation. It's just a chance to look at the goals and kind of discuss and take, uh, take stock of where you are in a given plan. When you're doing your job as a school committee well, you should really be monitoring that progress continually. So um, hopefully you're not looking at the goals once when they're set, check in in the middle, and then thinking about them not again until the end. But as the, as the year goes on, you're getting presentations at school committee meetings that help you understand how the district strategy is being implemented, um, how the superintendent's goals are being implemented in coordination with that, and sometimes learning about what you're going to hear in the year ahead, and what the next steps are going to be, what you might need in the budget to put something into place that's part of the goals. Uh, and then at the end, you have the summative evaluation. Then you go back, do the self-assessment, start the goal plan over again. That makes sense. Any questions? So that's the um, five-part cycle. Then there's the two-part tool. Um, that is the first part of the tool is smart goals. Um, you're probably familiar with the acronym SMART. Uh, specific and strategic, measurable, action-oriented, result, rigorous, realistic, and results-focused. 
uh, and time detract. Smart goals also have key actions and benchmarks, so you know what is going to happen and approximately when it's going to happen. Um, there are three goal areas that um, need to be represented in the goals. A professional practice goal, how is the superintendent going to grow his own practice, uh, a student learning goal, and district improvement goals. Sometimes you can't tell the difference between what's a student learning goal and a district improvement goal. kind of driving goals the same. The second part of the tool is the standards and indicators of effective professional practice, which I heard someone mentioning earlier. Um, there are four standards, instructional leadership, management and operations, family and community engagement, and professional culture. So the rubric is, you may have seen it, I have um, it's there are the four standards, and the standards are further broken down into indicators. The indicators are broken down again into more specific elements, and each element has descriptors of what each element looks like at four different performance levels, from needs improvement up to exemplary. Here's an example of one standard. The standard is instructional leadership. The indicator is curriculum, so curriculum is part of uh, instructional leadership. And then further broken down into the element of standards-based unit design. So how does standard-based unit design tie a curriculum, which is part of educational leadership? And what does standard-based unit design look like as it's implemented in an unsatisfactory way, <laughs> unsatisfactory way, up to an exemplary way? Um, you'll notice as you, if you look at the rubric that exemplary is almost always the same description as proficient with the ending added, is able to model this practice. So um, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education considers exemplary to really be a very high above and beyond level of practice, proficient to be a very high level of practice. So their desire is that exemplary be used on a very limited basis. Making sense to everybody? Can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, I I've been doing this for two years now, um, and when I first came in, I, I got this thing, and I see terminology like able to model this practice, and I'm like, what the heck does that mean? Um, so very often that's considered to mean to be a, uh, a model it for other superintendents? Right, so I assume it means it's a repeatable process, not just an artisan one-off thing, or... What, a repeatable process, but one that is uh, polished enough present so that other superintendents would want to follow that the same way. Okay. That makes sense. So teaching other superintendents to do it to the high level that your superintendent is doing. You could have they included a glossary. <laughs> <laughs> they already have about 800 pages of documentation for educator evaluation. <laughs> Don't ask for a glossary. <laughs> So what we're trying to do here is sort of break it down into a manageable uh, way for you. Um, so that's the, the five-part cycle, two-part tool. Any questions on the two-part tool that aren't asked yet? Um, and then there's the rating system. So there'll be a summative, rating, a summative performance on the goals, which goes from did not meet up to exceeded. Summative rating on the standards, which goes from unsatisfactory up to exemplary and an overall summative rating that combines the two. Um, there can't be an overall summative rating on, of proficient unless there was a proficient or better rating on instructional leadership. Make sense? So again, the three components were the five-part cycle, two-part tool, and multi-part rating system. So then the question is, how does it all work? So we'll try to make sense of that. So the first thing, the first step in this process, and again, you're going to hear me say this probably a couple of times, when this is done well, to make it easiest for yourselves, the more time that you spend at the beginning of this process, the easier it will be all the way through, especially when you get to doing the summative evaluation at the end. So the first part is at the goal setting and plan development, analysis of where you are setting the goals and plan development. So you're going to have a couple documents or a number of documents that you, you or the superintendent is using 
um, as the goals are drafted. Your mission and vision statement, your um, overarching goals, whether you call it your strategic plan, your strategic objectives, your district improvement plan, whatever it's called, it's those big vision, three to five year outlook of where, you're, where the district is headed. You'll also be, have your school improvement plans and um, the superintendent self-assessment from the prior year. So the first thing to do is draft the goals. Most often, the superintendent drafts the goals and says, here's the goals I've drafted. Let's talk about them. Um, and let me show you how, as you did, how they tie back to the district plan um, and why I think these should be the goals. Um, so you work with the superintendent to draft the goals. Sometimes a subcommittee starts that work, particularly in larger committees, um, just because sometimes it's easier for a smaller group to hammer out the nuts and bolts. I guess you don't hammer nuts and bolts, but to hammer out the details before bringing it to the full committee. But the, the school committee does have final approval on the goals. In the educator in the law, actually, if the evaluator and the evaluatee disagree on the goals, um, the evaluator prevails. Can you say that again? The evaluator. The evaluator, which is yeah. the school committee, and yeah. the evaluatee, which is the superintendent, yeah. disagree on what the goals should be, mm -hmm. um, the evaluator prevails. Okay. Um, and remember that the goals should be SMART, and we'll talk a little bit more about SMART goals later on tonight. Um, one of the key questions that you should be asking, one of the, to me, one of the dangers and pitfalls of SMART goals is there's that M for measurable. It's really easy to measure if you did a task, but doing a task doesn't mean you really made any progress. So really what you need to be thinking about is what is the outcome we want for this goal? How will this move our district forward? How will the district look different? And how will it change if this goal is implemented? So how will we know if we achieve that outcome? And have a discussion about that. How will we know if we achieve this outcome? What can you show us? Um, what, you know, what can you show us as evidence that, we've, that we have achieved this outcome and made progress? If you have that discussion at the beginning, it helps make sure that everybody's looking at the goal the same way and understands what it's going to achieve which makes it a whole lot easier at the end when everyone's evaluating the goal. Make sense? So after you've identified the goals, and I'm going to take a step back, I very specifically suggest that you do the goals first. I really look at this as a goal-oriented evaluation because that's what makes it particular to you and your district's progress. Um, so do the goals first. Think about what makes sense for Pentucket, what makes sense tying it to our district strategy that will help our students achieve what we want them to achieve. So after you've done the goals, then go into the rubric um, and decide what standard indicators and elements you're going to look at. There's a, depending on how you count, there's somewhere between 50 and 65 different ways to look at it. Don't use them all. I know you said that you wanted feedback on them all, but what we, what we suggest is exactly what you talked about at the beginning of once you have the goal, go into the rubric, look at the elements that most closely support or relate to that goal, and limit the number you're looking at. We usually say to somewhere between 8 and 12 different elements. So um, just a little clarity. Um, typically, the goals are limited, but because they expand across so many different standards, you can you can see how they play out. They're not just uh, uh, you know so tightly aligned to one mm -hmm. indicator or one standard. That's what I mean about getting feedback across multiple facets of the of the goal is a help to me. Mm -hmm. Well, if that's what you choose, then then that's your choice and absolutely fine. Yeah. Um, but the one thing that you do have to make sure of is as you're looking at the different elements that you might want to pick or indicators, every goal, or I'm sorry, every standard needs to be evaluated, so you can't ignore one standard. Any questions? So once you've set your goals and looked at the standards and how, where you might want to at least put your emphasis on that, then you want to discuss the evidence that you're, you're going to be looking at. And again, I think this is a really important top, uh, topic to talk about at the beginning. Again, so that everybody is looking at the goals, through this, hopefully through the same lens, with the same vision for what it's going to achieve. Um, 
just lost my thought. Um, and also to understand sometimes when um, committees look at some of the standards or look at the goal, they think, well, we don't, you know, we're not flies on the wall all the time. So how do we know? And to have that discussion at the beginning can sometimes have the superintendent talk to you about, this is how you will know. This is what I can show you. Um, so you get some comfort that you're not getting something put in front of you a year from now with no way to really figure out whether it happened or not because you've had, like, again, that discussion at the beginning. Um, so having that understanding what progress means and how you'll know what happens is a really important part of the discussion to have in the beginning. Again, it makes it so much easier all the way through to the end. You can also decide, and this is a local option, to weight the standards differently. There's four standards, so each one, if they're all even, would be 25%. If you decide in your district that in a given year there's a need to put more emphasis on one of them, then you can decide to put more emphasis on that one, which obviously means there's one you would have to put less emphasis on to still get to 100%. Um, but you can, you can make that decision. Actually, that's out there. I've actually never heard of a district that decided to do it uh, in the you know, three or four years that I've been talking about this. But it is an option. Um, and you, can also, you should also review the calendar so that you make sure that you know when things are going to happen and you don't let things slip and slip and slip and slip and slip by not having the calendar for the evaluation set. Make sense? So again, what's required versus what's optional? You're required to have four SMART goals in three areas, uh, professional practice, district improvement, and student learning, uh, a rating on all four of the standards, and a summary rating. Uh, you don't need to use all the elements and indicators. You can weight the standards differently. The timing of the evaluation cycle is up to you. It does not necessarily have to fall with the election cycle, with the, fis uh, with the fiscal year, with the calendar year, you decide what makes sense to you in your district. Um, and how the evaluation is used. If it's used for contract extension, raise, bonus, whatever, that's up to you. <coughs> and the process for completing the evaluation. Different, there's different nuances to it. Yes? Um, just a little uh, clarification around the timing of the evaluation cycle. Annually, the State Department requires that we submit, uh, I think by the end of July or the beginning of July, all of the documentation for every educator, including the superintendent's evaluation. So there is a timeline, <coughs> you know, ultimately that we need to comply with. So if you decide to use a different cycle, like the January or election, spring election, then you would just report it the next time That's you right. report it. That's right, exactly. Yeah, so the state does require a reporting on the superintendent's evaluation, which is new with this system. The only thing they see is the rating on the standards and the overall rating. They don't see all the composite. They don't see the goal ratings. They just see exactly what's reported for every other educator in the system. It's reported through the EPIMS, uh, Educator Management Information System, um, that all educator uh, evaluations <coughs> Any questions? So just uh, thinking about your document checklist, you want to agree on the goals, think about the outcomes you want, agree on any applicable elements of the rubric that you pick, uh, determine the weighting of the standards if you choose, discuss the evidence that will help you understand the work that's going on. Um, and then from that, once you have the goals and you know the, the SMART goals, the key actions, and the benchmarks, you can use that to create sort of a year-long agenda of goal check-ins. So it's not just that one check-in, but think about, what, you know, if we're looking at what's going to happen during the course of the year, when does it make sense for us to get presentations on certain elements of the district strategy or the superintendent's evaluation? Um, sometimes. Uh, committees actually put on the, you know, they'll have items on their agenda, they'll actually mark on the agenda what goal it relates to when they get a presentation so they can kind of keep that front of mind and be doing that monitoring all throughout the year. Make sense? So then you implement the plan. Then you get to the end of the cycle. Um, committee members complete an individual evaluation. You're probably all familiar with that. Uh, if you'll have to, in order to do that, the superintendent self-assessment, the evidence, 
and the wonderful form from the state. Um, the composite evaluation, once the individual evaluations are done, they all go to whoever is your compiler, whoever is going to create the composite evaluation. Sometimes a subcommittee, if it's a huge committee, um, or usually the chair or a designee who compiles everything. Um, the composite evaluation is discussed and voted on by the whole committee. Um, it's important to remember that the superintendent only has one evaluator in the end, which is the committee as a whole. Um, lots of brains, but only one evaluator. So that is the quick and dirty review of the superintendent's evaluation. Any questions? Thank you. Okay. So we'll move on then to goal setting. And again, I think part of my work has been done. Here's that slide again. I don't think I need to go through it again about the alignment of the goals. Um, so just a, a question for you, just a sort of a check-in. How would you rate your committee um, from one to four, one being the district has no overarching goals for improving student outcomes? You're not going to say one, because I just saw the document. Um, has adopted overarching goals, and the school committee and superintendent um, have set them, but don't really discuss them that often. They've adopted, the school committee and superintendent have adopted overarching goals and agreed on annual goals. Once a year, they're used to evaluate. Or four, the school committee has adopted annual goals and the superintendent has discussed, um, the superintendent has used these in creating an improvement strategy for the district. The goals are a frequent topic of discussion and they often drive budget decisions and other policies. Where would you stand? I feel like we're at four. You feel like you're at four? And I say where there's parts of four that I don't see regularly. Could you evaluate, Chris, to me uh, what you don't see? So I agree that we've adopted the goals. I don't think they're a frequent topic of discussion the way that I think they're done in other communities and the way that I've seen them done in the past. With regard, Certainly during the, I see during the budget decisions, I do see how some of the goals translate into where we are maybe um, increasing opportunities or adding technologies or things like that, but I don't see it. There's a lot of, a lot of the criteria that we go through. We don't have a way of seeing it because we're not in the office day to day. We're not at the schools day to day. And when I was originally first on the committee, I think there was a lot more information given to us in a formal school committee setting that I haven't seen in the past few years. And I feel like a lot of this has actually moved into some of the subcommittees. You know, being on the, so I've been on the teaching, learning, and accountability, and then the HR subcommittee. And see, my opinion of that is if I'm not part of the, the teaching and learning accountability mm -hmm. meeting or um, subcommittee, then I don't get that information. It's not being brought up to the full school committee. Um, it's now available for the public. It wasn't before because the, the notes were, the, the minutes were not detailed enough for that. Um, I do feel that sometimes his weekly updates include some of that information, but again, I don't feel we're dealing with it to the level of educating all of us about a lot of the stuff that is going on. So that's where I say we're not quite at four. So would you say we're at three? Yes. Pretty good. Anybody else? Yeah, and I don't think this session is <coughs> should be about <coughs> discussing the superintendent. Just for my own edification. No, and, and this isn't. I was handed a, an evaluation packet and didn't right. know what the heck to do with it. So mm -hmm. to me, this is educational. Yep. Sorry I, think, to hear I think you it's say a, that. Huh? I'm sorry to hear you say that. I don't know what to do with it. Well, no, but so I, I wasted think, my well, breath then. No, no, Wayne, it's, 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 you, you get elected, you come in, and you know, boom, here, you evaluate the superintendent. But I think oh. also, like, seeing what other school committee, school committees do. You know, I, I don't go to other school committee meetings. I don't have the time for it. But it would be interesting if, if she could give us some, you know, are the, are there presentations like we used to get huge presentations about the MCAT scores and, and how that shows where we are as a district and I think in the past few years maybe that information has been brought at the subcommittee level but it never makes it up to the full committee level and the public at that point. And, and right? I'll say so, mea culpa I mean I think a good way to structure our business meetings would be to sort of discuss things in the context of the goals right. we set for the year which 
I have certainly have not been doing. So, cool. and I'm pretty new to this, so I don't have all the context that some of you people have. But I think that maybe that's also our committee responsibility to bring, you know, to be saying what we need right. and. Because again, I don't know right. how, I've only seen how my school district, you know, com school committees run. Um, and so if there are things that are happening, if people don't all come to subcommittee meetings and there are things that we feel are valuable or would be edifying for other people, that we also can ask for that or to, you know, be bringing it for, for each other too. Well, I, um, and I think the superintendent will be happy to do that. My understanding was that. Before I was on the committee, the school committee business meetings were very long, and so I think yeah. But I don't think that Chris. I'm still speaking. I think he has tried to bring some of the information to the subcommittees to reduce the length of the business meeting. But if we want it back at the business meeting, I think that could be done. It's just something we need to communicate. And what I was going to say is that I think that some of that. There's important information being done at the subcommittee level that I think deserves to be raised up to the business level, business meeting level. Um, some of the length of the business meetings before was due to a lot of issues that wouldn't even um, be part of all of this. There were, there were other things that were happening that made us go so late. Okay. Chris, so. can I just, two points. First, what you're asking the school committees to do is quite extensive. Very few school committee members have 40 years of education. Consequently, if we were to do that on a bi-weekly basis, it is quite extensive. And I'm not sure a time commitment that a lot of people would indeed do. I have been to a lot of school committee meetings, and I have never, not once, in my like, 20 years did they spend time constantly revisiting initial goals and strategic plans. I think time limitation is a factor, and I'm sure if a, if a chairperson of a subcommittee thought something was real important, geez, I would hope you'd bring it up. Is the easiest talking to, in this case, Andy, the chairperson, and say, this is what we've come up with. We've got a couple of quirks, kinks, and yammer. This is what we've been talking about. I'd like to know. So I've got a lot of confidence in everybody here that they would. If something's real important in a subcommittee meeting, it's not being held confidential. It doesn't need to be. So it could be brought to the forefront if it is that important. So. Would it be advantageous to have a small snippet at every business meeting to discuss what each happened at subcommittee meetings, just to highlight yeah. areas. Review. Just like a yeah, rapid fire Summary. round of... Because right. now all we do is well. approve the minutes, but that doesn't necessarily go into any detail. Yeah, and it, I mean, it could literally just be a quick summary. Um, you know, each person gets a minute or two, <laughs> so it doesn't turn into... Well, you mentioned MCAS, and if the superintendent was a five, I went to my super one day and I said, we have 47... IEPs coming in. I said, do you want me to tell you what our sixth grade MCAS scores will be? And I was right on. And so the one thing that's missing here, regardless of who's doing evaluations, whether you're evaluating assistant principals, superintendents, or what have you, this um, the notion that all students are going to meet the very expectations that we want them to, and we work hard to get them to, that doesn't always happen. I mean, essentially, I would think where this is going is that this really has to play into our, our business meetings. Right. You know, maybe more than it does to satisfy everybody. But I think that to a certain extent it does. I, I think, mean, I, I, I don't think, think it does I mean, too, not but. maybe to the, to the level of detail that some of the subcommittees, for sure, by nature, and certainly not numbered the way, you know, your final summative would be, but... But there are definitely things that we, you know, I, it's not that difficult, I'm sure, if we said, hey, can you number that to your goals? Like, that wouldn't... Yeah, because, I mean, I look down the list, and I do see different things. I mean, that's that I've served on every subcommittee, but I've served on a few of them. And I go down this list, and I, I see topics here that we have discussed and brought up. 
And there are some new ones here, you know, like the math and Lexile was just brought up recently um, and tying, tying it in. So I do see it all evolving together, but maybe we just need more detail. So I just had like 30 seconds to look at the strategic plan and the action plan. Um, and part of, you know, part of the evolution away from the strategic plan that was sort of the set in stone, spend a lot of time putting it together, put it on the shelf and dust it off and is sort of by the wayside, replaced with the strategic objectives that I heard at least briefly laid out earlier so that you can be a little bit more nimble in looking at, you know, this is where we want to get to, this is how we think we're going to do it, and if something comes up or if the path that you thought you were going to follow turns out not to be working, you can retrench and figure out a different path to get to your goal. Um, so you have your, your sort of three to five year outlook, and then every year you have what's going to happen this year that gets us closer and closer to the three year outlook. And it's that uh, those sort of those key actions and benchmarks that happen this year that you want to sort of understand are being implemented and making progress. And I think you talked about, you were talking a little bit about that um, when you were talking about the fees. And, you know, we set this as a goal and it took us a while to get there. But if we didn't get there, we would be able to sort of analyze why it didn't happen. So I think the, the objective is to have not just the administration understand that path to improvement, but have the school committee understand it as well. That makes sense? To paraphrase what you're saying is for any evaluation to work, whatever you set for initial goals, et cetera, they need to be revisited. And they need to be, on occasion, updated. You can't just let them go as though they never exist. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Absolutely. Very well said. So it sounds like you're, you're almost a four. You're three plus from what people are saying. So again, there's that, you know, that s s quest for continuous improvement where you have your strategy and that um, you're bringing that district strategy into annual closer, you know, closer, more specific SMART goals, linking that to the budget and policy work that you're doing. Um, implementing it and monitoring its progress. Again, the SMART goal acronym. Um, and then thinking about how are you making sure that your goals are measurable? And again, that looking at not just the outputs, but the outcomes. And thinking about what data is there for us to look at. It's not all numbers. Um, it's, there are ways to look at data that aren't numbers. And that's one of the discussions to have as you're thinking about the goals is what else are we looking at besides MCAS or PARC or whatever it is this year um, that we want to understand where our students are, how our students are, are making progress. So what other types of outcomes like does your school committee or, or are there? I mean, there's the easy ones like you just said. But well, and I heard, I sort of was hearing one discussed as I came in, which was attendance, mm -hmm. right? And not only student attendance, staff attendance, discipline, um, Courses that are offered, where kids are getting into college. I mean, you can probably add to that list off the top of your head another 20 or yeah, 30 we, things. Yeah, we spent um, quite a bit of time retooling our uh, programming and expanding courses with accelerated courses for students, early um, high school, college credit uh, courses, you know, those kinds of things. So now we're able to show over time that more students are on a trajectory to more advanced learning. And uh, so that's an outcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another one is the um, big reduction we've seen in the applications to private schools. Yeah, 60 percent reduction in students applying to uh, private schools between eighth and ninth grade is a reduction. Yeah. Any other examples people can think of? Those are some great ones. Smaller class size. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Class sizes, um, teacher turnover, a lot of different things you can look at that give you an idea of the health of the district. Um, so this is just, um, so what I, in asking Dina what you might want to talk about or concentrate on tonight, I think your first thought was given that we didn't have time to do everything under the sun, that maybe looking at some school committee goals was appropriate. Does that resonate with people? 
Yeah. So, so the one, before I forget to say it, the one thing that I'm going to say about school committee goals is they have to be things that are within your purview. Um, not a way to sneak more goals onto the superintendent, but um, things that relate to budget or policy or um, community outreach or things that are actually within your purview to do. Not that you don't support each other in accomplishing the goals, um, but a goal that says MCAS scores will increase in the third grade, that's our school committee goal. You guys can't do that. That has to depend on somebody else. So that would not be an appropriate school committee goal. So thinking about, um, this is just a, this is actually a made up goal. Um, improving the budget development process. The school committee wanted to work on that. So some of the outputs are, did they do what they said they were gonna do and what evidence did they find? So they wanted a better budget calendar than they had. So they had the published calendar as the output, increased outreach to municipal officials. So they knew they had agendas and minutes of meetings that showed that increased output. Survey of the community's understanding of the budget, an initial survey and a follow-up survey, um, and enhanced communication plan. So what, you know, they had products of what they were gonna do in the community to get more information out. So then the outcomes, or did they get the results that they wanted? Um, did they, were they able to articulate the impact of their outputs and get the outcome they wanted? So did they have increased community attendance at dis district budget hearings? Um, did the elected officials support their budget at town meeting? Those, those meetings they had, did that um, increase the, um, the support from municipal officials? Um, did, this, did a follow-up survey show that the community understood the budget better than they had before? And ultimately, did they get the budget that they wanted at their town meetings? So, so that so, sort of to contrast output and outcome. So if I asked you if this goal was smart, um, expand the use of technology regarding homeschool information on class assignments and student progress, would you say that was a smart goal? Fitting the acronym. No. Because there's no timeline. How can you measure it because you don't know what it is? Yep. You don't know what you really don't know what you're measuring, right? Sort of. You sort of do, but not really. Like use of technology. Like that's a very broad, yep. Yep. non specific. Yep. So um, it's not a smart goal. Sometimes the easy way to, to, especially at the beginning when you're doing a SMART goal, is to have the goal statement say as measured by, and then you know how you're gonna measure the outcome. Um, so part of, the, part of the question you wanna ask is what data are we gonna use, or how, how do we know this is an important goal to us, right? Um, what is it going to accomplish? Is it too broad or is it too narrow? Um, expanding the use of technology might be too broad a goal. Um, I don't know because we don't know enough information. Um, and and be, how will we measure whether or not we've done it? Some, did should you, be a timeline? There should be a timeline. Yeah. Is, is this to expand it over, over a year, over 10 years? That's a, that's a good point. Um, so there was no timeline on this one. Um, what, were, what were the key actions that were going to be required to do the goal? That's not shown here. Um, what was going to be the result? What were they aiming for? Why did they want to have this goal? Um, and what, what was the... Uh, the timed and tracked, um, as Lisa said, uh, what, were the, what was the completion date and what were the benchmark dates? So you can see it's easy to state a goal that might not be smart and specific and you don't know what you're going to accomplish. So what I thought we would do, um, tra track gears here and get you talking even a little more, is think about, have you guys think about what do you want to have this year for school committee goals? Is that the direction that we're headed in here? I see yeah. some nods. So we, we, we did have, um, we developed some school committee goals for 2016. We've mm -hmm. been remiss this year, so I think that would be a good exercise. Okay. So do you, what, often what I have people do when I start this is give you all a couple of post-it notes to write a couple of your th thoughts about what are the priorities that you see for this year. Uh, amenable to people? So 
sorry. It was an accordion oh, bio sorry. style. I wasn't. I love those. I was unexpected. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Love you. They're just really fun to play with. That's all. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm very tired. I've been up since four. I'm not very peaceful right now. What does she want us to do again? Write down our priorities. It's right over there. So do you just want like a subject matter that's However, not like the actual official right now? No, okay. <laughs> okay. Can I be more yes. specific than like the budget so though? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Support. What do you call that? Oh my God. <laughs> Word retrieval. Pick three, right? Two. How's your knee feeling? It looks like it's good. Yeah. I, our, our school does a 5K. Um, so I've been like, that's been my goal since surgery is to be ready. It's, it's a week from Friday. So, yeah, last year, my class ran, won the trophy for the highest participation. So I feel like it's, it helps when I. I this was just a, I put mine up already. Sorry. No, this is just a.
I don't want to take any pizza home. Or your sons will eat it. You got like an all olive one. He's got to run. He said he got an all olive pizza. Olive? I think so he wanted it. Everybody's got their own, right? <laughs> consistency to improve community relations uh, teacher morale environment in schools um, impacting SEL social emotional learning um, to reduce the level of student transfers uh, I assume that means out of the district um, school building project ensure expanded control of uh -oh. Central. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I write like a five-year-old. Um, the, the idea oh, is to expand the control of central office staff against key against key areas, areas of for approval. Uh, co cooperation by all to move forward. Community outreach support advance support or advance the high school middle school school project. Um, Students' effective progress with <coughs> innovation schools, community input, uh, communication, community involvement in building, building project, project. Uh, community involvement with high school, middle school building project, um, ensure lines of communication open to all stakeholders, parents, students, teachers. Uh, training and oversight of anti-bullying policies, procedures, not all schools to all stakeholders. At all schools. At all schools to us. Okay. Um, consistent rules and regulations with penalties, policy reviews, amend, upgrade, continue academies, teacher exit interviews. Um, to gain approval of the school building project as measured by all three towns approving funding for the project. Uh, to complete the next phase of the school building project, building community support for the building project. <laughs> the building project is going to be one of our goals. Community project. outreach and support. Okay, any, any other themes that you heard come through there? Any other thoughts that someone else might have had that you think, yes, that, that sounds like um, something we should be concentrating on? Andy, how does it align with the goals that you had previously? Uh, I can actually pull those up. Those were uh, proactively, consistently engage the PRSD community to keep it informed about important initiatives, including budget, the building project, curriculum evolution, etc. Continue to optimize school resources to deliver the best return on investment in student education, facilities, activities, and athletics. Develop strategies for strengthening and increasing the capacity of the central office administration function. And finally, complete a comprehensive environmental assessment of all our facilities, buildings, and grounds. So we had those four back in the day. So does the last one tie into the building project? No. no. Right. It could be solved by the building project. That's sort of what I was thinking. Rip it all down. <laughs> so, if the building project is one goal, how many goals do you think it's reasonable for you to have? Our usual rule, our usual rule is, if you have too many, you don't have any. Or less than eight. Way less than eight. So three or four. Yeah. Three or four. Yeah. <laughs> three or four would be would be good. Uh, except, how big is the building project? Goal? I mean, that's every. Yeah, it's massive because there's one. the whole side of getting the stuff done you need yeah. to get done to stay on. And then there's the whole side of get people excited about it, so they'll vote yeah. for it. Yeah, yeah. So it can almost subsume. So you almost were saying that there may be two goals there. That are, I mean, the building project is 
but there's almost two parts that make it two goals. Is that how I would interpret it? Yeah, there's that? sort of the administrative part, and there's the community engagement part, I think. But is the administrative part mostly, I mean, the building committee and Dr. Mulkeen do the lion's share of that piece. Of the work. Yes, the, uh, yes, uh, of the administrative <coughs> aspect of it, where, I mean, I don't know, again, <laughs> don't know, but is it our role more to do the getting the out there, stuff. community, you know, yeah, community I'd, I'd outreach, selling it, getting people on board, finding out concerns, dealing with those concerns, or bringing them to the appropriate person as needed? I agree with that. I think we kind of agreed that that's exactly the direction. I, I think we're stuck. That's, that's like having a homework assignment before, during, and after every school committee meeting. That's just where we are right now. It's part of the journey. Well, and the first part was almost already done last year in regards to, a year ago, we didn't have a building committee. We didn't have an OPM. We didn't, like, so we've taken that first step of right. our <coughs> administrative responsibilities and given that off, and now it's yeah. that group's responsibility. And part of our thing. responsibility is to let them people out there right. know that right. this is being run right. really well. Just the right. community engagement and, yeah. part of it. And to keep them positive, and right. then when it's time to generate the excitement right. to right. get the the Good. momentum going mm -hmm. in the direction that we want it to go, hopefully. <laughs> but the vehicle for that is central office. I mean, we do not really show up in town meeting or selectmen's meetings, at least in Merrimack, to say this is what we want. It has fallen upon central office to do that. Mm -hmm. So we can have as a goal to say that we would like to implement, complete whatever phraseology we'd like to use. But none of us here are going to be the instruments of that. If you, if you, you know, realistically, that is central office. Not necessarily. I think a lot of it is the building committee because they're okay. the ones making I, the decisions. But to convince Merrimack Grove and West Newberry to vote for this is not the building. I don't think it's going to be. Well, I think it's it's a coordinated effort. I mean, I remember when yeah. the Page School renovations yeah, I, were going through. It was the building the committee, committee, the town meeting. I really do. It was the selectmen. It was the school committee. I mean, the school committee members really. Yeah, I think are the ones. As we get down the road, we were talking about this earlier. You know, if you get out there too early with the building committee and the designer and everything, people start asking questions we just can't answer at this point. Well, the so OPM they, and the architect firm also like help with that yeah. community outreach and you know conveying information and right right but, but I think early on I think our role is more important in telling people what's going on yeah. and then we bring other people in as it progresses and we can talk in more detail about how many square foot feet are in the you know science lab or whatever what might but initially, be. I think it's, like, and this is what we talked about earlier in the presentation, it's like, here's what's been accomplished to date, here's what's going on, here's what, you know, if we, as you look at other districts, these approximately cost, so you know what you to expect. It's too early to talk about what it's eventually going to be. We just want you to know what's going on and to understand how these projects work in general. I think that's a good role for us right now. Absolutely, but maybe as we write, because as, I mean, Jeff has done the lion's share of showing up at these meetings in the past oh, and yeah. giving that information, which I, I was what I took from what you said. Well, I, the, the history is that the last building project failed terribly, and one of the reasons I think was that central office was not, and the superintendent was trying to do a very good job. Central office was not real as involved that time as this central office is. Right. And it was not the school committee at all the last time right. when the building project failed. Okay. So what I mean, I was just thinking maybe we combine it so it becomes both of those things in that piece. Or are you saying, am I... To that, have as that a goal you, of this group yeah. to complete the building project or, you know, say complete phase one, phase two, phase three, right. yes. But what is the instrument of that? Right. Well, but what we're talking about is that we should focus more on the community relations side of it rather than that. Um, and, you know, I think we are well equipped for that because we are representatives in our towns. We're talking to people, and people know who we are, and I think they're more likely to talk to us than they are to someone on the building committee, and certainly, you know, the project manager. 
or something like that. So. Yeah. I think the school committee can articulate, um, if it, you know, as the project develops, the school committee can articulate the educational benefits um, as well as some of the other benefits of the, of the project in a way that is, um, that the community has confidence in the school committee can has confidence, so therefore the community has confidence in the project, but you know, being able to articulate the need and benefits mm -hmm. of, the, of the project very often do fall to the school committee as yeah. spokespeople. It's like important people here from their neighbors, not from, yeah. But I mean, Dr. Malkmeen has that as one of his goals too, so I think right. that piece is important. This is, mm -hmm. Yeah, this is not excluding anybody, oh, right. no, but no, I think no. we should be driving the, the process forward regardless of who's showing up. So the other thing that I saw was sort of a more general community outreach. Um, it, you know, the other thing that came through in a couple of, as I was sorting through the, the pieces of paper, was sort of a more general community mm -hmm. outreach, I assume, about, again, the, the successes, the, the needs of the schools. Am I interpreting that right? Yeah, I think that's just ongoing, yeah. year after year. Yeah, that sounded like more <laughs> Well, but how do we, how do we let... Like right now, we're covered in the paper through either press releases or through coverage of our meetings. Like, is there another way that we can get the community involved? Not the building project, but just in general and up to date and know what's going on beyond that. More than the weekly bullet and the email thing. I mean, because those go, that goes to everybody, right? The emails that we get every week. <laughs> From Dr. Malkin? No, from don't. as a parent, no. I get emails from, from the, school. the school district and from the Bagnell School, like Every week. updates. Yes, hmm. I get lots of emails from the school district, yeah. which is great. Yeah. But unless you're a parent, <laughs> you don't get them. So, right? No, no. I'm. Just, I. But, right, right. We uh, we post up on our Facebook page as well. Mm -hmm. I haven't been as active lately due to my condition, but <laughs> that'll ramp up again. Okay. So if, if, if you're thinking about the different things that came through, and one is the building project, and one is general community outreach as sort of an ongoing goal, but thinking about what are we going to do this year to do that community outreach, which I think is a little bit of what some of the work was getting to. Anything else? There was, uh, I think a couple people had something about policy. Just a general policy review, upgrade, amend, uh, take a look at. Uh, changes in that. Yeah, things ch change, yep. and you know, you've got to have policies that impact those changes. So, are you thinking of uh, things that change, they want to have policies to respond to those changes, or are you thinking about changes in like legislation or MASC recommended? Probably, changes probably to both. So far? Do you have a policy subcommittee? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that kind of keeps on top of that part of, the, part of the work. Anything else um, that people, that someone wrote down that we haven't talked about that they want to make a case for this is something we should be working on this year? The curriculum again. came up a couple of times, didn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah, curriculum did. Curriculum? I think one of them was like the budget. Budget to support curriculum. Um, I think it did come up a couple of times. Uh, then there was teacher morale and teacher exit interviews. I didn't write teacher morale and teacher exit interviews. Teacher morale and teacher, teacher, morale and teacher morale exit together. interviews. So if someone wanted to have, what would the school committee's role when teacher morale? Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and he's buying pizza for everyone. <laughs> I think that would be more administration. Right? Yeah. yeah. And same thing with exit interviews. Yeah. Administration may have recommendations for things that the committee could do in terms of budget or if it was professional development type things or contract, contractual things. Sounds like you're not in the ready to embark upon 
Community outreach policy uh, curriculum. Sound right? Say it again. Building project community outreach policy curriculum. Anything else that I'm missing? No. Okay. So that sometimes the start of being able to formulate the goals is a little bit of a iterative, messy process. Um, but what I'm going to ask you to do, I'm going to hand out a worksheet and ask you to um, work in pairs, sort of draft the goal and think about what would make it a smart goal, and then we can come back together and talk about um, whether those goals sound right or if they need some more massaging. Make sense? Anybody want to? Anybody want to claim? Do the building project. Building project. Does anyone else want to work on the building? So there's nine of you. Mm -hmm. So and four goals. So two, 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 and three. Is that right? Yes. Uh, building projects. Community outreach. Anyone want to grab that one? <laughs> <laughs> Done. Sure. Thanks, man. Oh, I'm All on right. the building. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right. oh, sorry. Oh, 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 so, are you on? We're on the building committee, actually. I'll do the building okay. project. Although I could do curriculum, too. Start looking at curriculum. Curriculum. Do you want to do curriculum? I do awesome. awesome. that. No, we're, we're already good at that. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Oh, <laughs> we need to expand. Isn't there only one left? <laughs> <laughs> right. Policy. You would like to work on policy, correct. don't you know? Okay. <laughs> So give me about That's a lot of work. Oh, all right. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, new curriculum renewal process. Oh, check it out. You know, we, so our curriculum does need to be renewed. We have a renewal process in place. I think it's part of the school committee's responsibility to support that, to somehow support that with the community, communi uh, communicate to the community why we need a renewed curriculum. Um, but I don't know how the school committee actually Everything we started to say started to get into like things that the school committee mm -hmm. couldn't mm -hmm. measure Could it, itself. Can I help? Yes. That would be great. So one of the things that you might think about is what's under your purview. Right. So when you get come on uh, to that question about so what do we do? Right. So budget's under your purview, right? So you may want to establish a priority to support a certain amount of okay. money that goes toward the purchase of curriculum instructional materials that's where we'll be right. so if, if you were to you know uh, designate uh, for instance um, that the, the committee will set as a priority English language arts and mathematics instructional materials for the upcoming year and uh, uh, set aside a portion of funding to support that that's measurable doable timely you know it, it's pretty much everything <laughs> So that's, that's an example. If you think about what is under your control, and then how do you support? So rather than going out to lobby in the community for it, all you need to do is say, 
here's what we're going to do financially to support that, because I can't do that on my own. If you, if I come with my budget proposal and you say, nah, not so much, that's out of my hands. That's, uh -huh. And I was when what I was thinking originally when I said my statement was about almost exactly that yeah. was to prioritize, and I said one subject area per year only because. Having gone through this in my own school district, I know that it can get extremely expensive, particularly in the ELA and math. Um, so it's more sustainable, um, kind of like a curriculum renewal cycle, like doing all of that at once is extremely overwhelming. But if every fourth year you're saying, all right, we're going to revise looking at the math curricula and what supports our curriculum document and what materials we might need, that's you know, that, and then the next year, and then we're not going to look at it again in a serious way for another four or five years, and then the next year, ELA, science, social studies, et cetera. Almost it's, like what you do for a capital plan, in correct. a way. Except um, it's your instructional materials and your curriculum. But it's much more sustainable to do it one at a time, over time, mm -hmm. with other big, although I understand the urgency, because given this, you know, that we have a lot of piecemeal. Um, It's set. It's set. So you'll be able to present to the committee, this is what we want to do. Yep, in the upcoming year. Exactly. Yeah. So. In this budget cycle, I'll be coming to them with uh, recommendation. Okay. Supporting the superintendent's recommendation for, for, for instructional materials, that would be a, a way of doing it. Yep, absolutely. Can I do one more quick one, and then we'll go with this? Like a good communication. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so um, the proposed goal is reaching out to community for general school information beyond the Penteca community with school moves. It's kind of a general goal. Yep. So, in other words, so getting down to more specific, so naming your stakeholders, so it's not just parents, it's community, it's um, people in the community that don't have kids in school. People currently don't pay attention. Yep. That's right. Or at least they'll be educated to the point where maybe they won't be against us. <laughs> well, even for the budget, you know, not even just the building project, but the budget or really anything moving forward that's new. Yeah, so you might want to name stakeholders and, and think about what are the methods Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, I know. I'm just like, I'm going to give them back to you before I get in really big trouble by playing with them nonstop. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you so very much, much for coming. Thank you. Thank you for taking time out of your evening. Yes. Thank Feel you free to take some pizza. Thank you. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> All right, before everyone leaves, may I please have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. 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 Any discussion? None. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All in favor? Aye. All in favor? Aye.